Begul, good afternoon, Reen. I hope you're doing well. And as always, thank you for the opportunity to uh, join in uh, this afternoon to provide an update to you in the community. As you mentioned, uh, we are streaming live on the MCA Facebook page and we are recording it and we'll share it later on uh, through some of our other social media platforms. Uh, the, as Reen has mentioned, as always, our questions will only be taken on the CKON within CKON by calling 575-2101 or 358-3427. For today's discussion, we'll be covering the current status of COVID-19 in our community, the current restrictions, and then the vaccine rollout, as mentioned earlier by Reen. It has now been 11 months since we declared a state of emergency for Akwesasne. As always, I want to acknowledge that dealing with this pandemic and practicing all of the necessary precautions has and continues to be challenging for each and every one of us. The deaths in our community due to COVID-19 are a very unfortunate reminder that everyone uh, must continue to take the necessary precautions to keep ourselves and our community, and especially the most vulnerable, safe. I do extend my deepest condolences to all those affected by loss of a loved one during this pandemic has been extremely difficult for all of us. On behalf of the Mohawk Council, I want to say thank you to everyone who continues to practice all of the recommended precautions day in and day out against our fight against the spread of COVID-19. It is always really important that we don't adopt a sense of false security, a sense of security with respect to this pandemic. It is not over, unfortunately, and everybody continues to be at risk and we have to continue to be smart and responsible. And please ensure that we continue to wear our masks in public and maintain a meter of two, of a distance of two meters, uh, six feet from others. The number of positive cases in an Akwesasne and surrounding areas still continue to be concerning. I'll provide you with some active numbers for the uh, region around us. The Franklin County is reporting two, 328 active, St. Lawrence County 638 active, the Eastern Ontario Health Unit is 106, Cornwall is 25, the MCA is reporting 28, and the St. Lawrence Tribe is 44. And those numbers were as of yesterday, they may have changed. All confirmed cases are considered active until they have been deemed resolved by a healthcare provider. On December 11th, the MCA reported that we received confirmation from the Eastern Ontario Health Unit that three staff members at Junkanusity Long-Term Care on Goanoga had tested positive for COVID-19. By December 31st, six residents were reported as being positive at Junkanusity. January and February, we've seen a fluctuation of positive cases between residents and staff at that facility. On January 23rd, 2021, the MCA reported that we received confirmation from the Eastern Ontario Health Unit that staff members at Yakisuta Lodge in Gisnaikne had tested positive for COVID-19. Technically, one resident or one staff member is uh, considered an outbreak. The positive test results were, de were detected through our regular nasal swabbing surveillance testing. The staff member, when, when found to be positive, isolated at home, and all residents' families were notified of the outbreak. All residents of Yakisutta Lodge were tested with the guidance and direction of the Eastern Ontario Health Unit, and the staff continued to participate in ongoing surveillance. And this continues to be the same for uh, Junkanusidae on Cornwall Island. Both facilities continue to follow the infection prevention and control policies that were implemented. The, enha the enhanced infection prevention and control measures at both, at both Yakisutta and Junkanusade include symptom screening of residents and team members at least twice daily, cleaning high touch surfaces four times a day, ensuring that all staff are wearing masks, face shields and personal protective equipment, and ensuring that our infection prevention and control protocols are being strictly followed. On February 10th, Yakisutta Lodge was removed from the outbreak status following two weeks of negative COVID-19 tests for both residents and staff members. To be removed for an outbreak status, the facility or the long-term care has to have completed two weeks of negative testing for the staff, residents, and administration and all people that work within the building. 
On February 16th, the MCA received confirmation from the Eastern Ontario Health Unit that another staff member had, at Yucky Sutta Lodge had tested positive. The COVID-19 tests results again were detected at Yucky Sutta Lodge by a regular nasal swabbing surveillance and testing. This past Monday, February 22nd, the MCA announced that the Junkanusade long-term care facility on Cornwall Island has been officially removed from outbreak status. The announcement comes after completion of two weeks of negative COVID-19 tests on all staff, residents, and administrative members who work or reside within the building. I want to extend on behalf of myself and the MCA, our gratitude to all the staff, administration, and men and members who continue to remain diligent in their duties and following the safety protocols during this time. Ensuring that no residents or staff members were exposed has not been easy, but as we appreciate everything that the workers have done there, I appreciate the families that have taken, that have understood and exercised patience during this, during this difficult time, and as well as the community for all the positive thoughts that have been sent out to our family and friends and staff at the two facilities. We currently have 28 active cases within Akwesasne. The MCA extends our best wishes for a speedy recover to all those infected. And again, we extend our appreciation for you being isolated and quarantined to prevent the further spread of COVID-19. Again, as a constant reminder to reduce our chances of being infected or spreading the COVID-19, we have to continuously wash our hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. We must refrain from touching our eyes, nose and mouth with unwashed hands. Make sure you and the people around you follow good respiratory hygiene, wear a mask or other face coverings in indoor public places. Maintain at least two meter, six feet distance between yourself and others. Avoid or limit activities that would put you in contact with anyone outside of your home. Stay home and self-isolate with even minor symptoms such as a cold, cough, mild fever until you recover and have someone bring you supplies. If you have questions, or symptoms, please call the MCA Community Health for a pre-screening by phone. They will schedule a COVID-19 test if needed. If you are awaiting the COVID-19 test results, it's extremely important that you continue to quarantine for as long as your healthcare provider advises. Do your best to keep up to date on the latest information, but be sure to obtain your information from trusted sources. We must all continue to work hard to keep ourselves and our community safe. And as always, if you have any questions, please call the MCA Community Health Program, 575-2341, extension 3220. Just some quick statistics. For the month of January, the community health nurses received 1,379 calls, administered 343 COVID-19 tests. February, from the 1st to the 21st, received 570 calls and administered 151 tests. Since March, we have received around 6,400 calls to the community health nurses, and we have administered 1,631 tests. For anyone residing in the northern portion of Akwesasne who is currently in quarantine and needs assistance, we ask you to please call 1-800-480-4208 or 613-937-4322 if you are in need of basic food, supplies, or essentials. This is the Community Quarantine Program. It is designed for community members who have no assistance or resources to help them throughout their quarantine or isolation period. Quarantine can affect us all, our entire family, and no one is always prepared to quarantine. If you have been advised to quarantine, you should not leave your home for any reason. If you, have, if you have no family members who can get you supplies or don't have the means to purchase necessary supplies while in quarantine, this program is for you. That is the community, community and quarantine program. Essential supplies will be delivered to you confidentially delivered to your home with zero contact. I want to mention that anyone who is calling in to be, please be patient about receiving a call back. It's important that calls for assistance be placed directly by the community member in need and not by someone on their behalf. This is to ensure confidentiality. Anyone who calls during the day will have, to, will have their order filled through the ACFS food pantry program. And any callers after 5 p.m. will utilize the number nine delivery service. 
If you call number nine directly for this service without going through the community quarantine program, you will be responsible for the payment for that service. So please ensure to use these numbers that I've provided. The pandemic has changed all of our lives in our normal, in our normal routines immensely. And then for the individuals and those individuals that have to be in quarantine, this has added additional stress and anxiety. I want to remind everyone that the, that the community health program of mental health wellness is available at 613-575-2341, extension 3115. Someone is always there to listen and help. Anyone who has questions about the COVID-19 response, emergency plans can also contact our Emergency Operations Center by calling 575-5005 or 575-2331. In our community, we still have, uh, we continue to have the curfew in place under the jurisdiction of the MCA, which is in place from 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. And the travel radius still continues to be 100 miles and 160 kilometers. As of January 12th, the province of Ontario declared a second state of emergency and issued stay at home orders, which were in effect from January 14th until February 16th, 2021. The Eastern Ontario Health Unit, which includes, which Akwesasne, is currently in the province's orange zone status. This is a restrictive status that will remain in place for the next two weeks. Under the, under the orange zone status, Organized public events and social gatherings are limited to 10 indoor and 25 outdoor. Restaurants, gyms, retail establishments, and other facilities are open with strict limits in place. These include wearing masks, maintaining social distancing, and restrictions on opening closing times for businesses. This will vary depending on the type of establishment. Further details can be found on the Ontario website or the Ontario Eastern Health Unit website. The zone status for the Eastern Ontario Health Unit is subject to change upon reassessment, which occurs every two weeks. It's important that everyone understand the continued severity of this, of, of this situation. Recent concerns about the variant strain and the effectiveness of the vaccine against these strains have been raised. These new strains or variants are a mutation of the original COVID-19 virus and they exist due to the circulation to the virus circulating in different areas and populations. The more the virus circulates, the more opportunity it has to change or mutate. As of February 17th, there have been 348 cases of the UK variant of COVID-19 that have been reported in Ontario. Variant strains from South Africa and Brazil have also been identified. Evidence shows that these three variants are more contagious than the original COVID-19 and have a shorter incubation period, which results in rapid transmission. Currently, there is ongoing research of the, vac of the current vaccine's effectiveness on the COVID-19 variants. This is deeply concerning as this is now the potential for a third wave due to these variants. Despite the number of uh, growing numbers of variants in Ontario, the COVID-19 vaccine is still highly recommended. We have seen an increase in Aquasustin's numbers over the past weeks, and these have been attributed to family gatherings. While the Eastern Ontario Health Unit currently restricts uh, indoor gatherings up to 10 people, the Mohawk Council is, is strongly urging our community members to limit their contact to only those people in your home. This along with practicing all of the necessary precautions is the safest way to reduce our chances of being infected and spread the COVID-19. I cannot reiterate enough that this is extremely important. We know from our health professionals that many of the new cases are related to small family gatherings and that People need to ensure that they are staying within their home bubbles at this time. Plans to allow for the safe resumption of the MCA have been put in place as of February 16th. Our staff here have began a staggered transition back to their workplaces with building operating at 50% capacity. At this time, the MCA is set to return to normal operations as of March 1st, 2021. It's important to note that these timelines are subject to change based on the number of positive cases of COVID-19 in our community. For the Akwesasne Board of Education, reopening dates have been tentatively set as well. The March break has been moved to March 1st, from March 1st to March 5th. 
Remote learning will continue until April 9th, and students in a hybrid model will return to school on April 12th. So students will be back in school on April 12th. For the Akutsasana Child Care Program, child care centers will reopen for, for children of essential workers on March 1st. On April 12th, the child, the child care centers are, are tentatively set to open, to fully reopen. It is with the, it, it was recently announced that the new COVID-19 border restrictions were being imposed by the government of Canada that requires non-essential travelers arriving in Canada from the US to submit a negative COVID-19 test that was taken in the past 72 hours. This new restrictions began on February 15th. On February 17th, the MCA was no, was received notification and confirmation from the CBSA that Akwesasne residents are exempt from these new requirements. The last topic that I want to discuss is the COVID-19 vaccine rollout. The Mohawk Council of Akwesasne's Department of Health and Community Health Program is planning for the community vaccination of the COVID, of vaccination of COVID-19. We want to ensure that we are ready to administer them as soon as they are received. Pre-registration for the COVID-19 vaccine is open. Vaccine supply, unfortunately, at this time in Canada is limited. We are encouraging you to pre-register as soon as possible by calling Community Health at 613-575-2341. The vaccines we've received are made by Moderna and are administered in two doses. Once the initial in, in vaccine injection is given, it is followed by a booster injection given 21 days later. At this time, the MCA has only received enough vaccines to vaccinate the residents and staff of both of our long-term care facilities. The second dose of these vaccines were administered on February 13, 2021. A vaccine priority framework was developed by our Department of Health and the next group to receive the vaccine will be the essential frontline staff, such as healthcare workers and the first responders. After this group is completed, elderly age 60 or more will be the next group, followed by adults within the districts and Akwesasne living in Cornwall will be the last group. We are currently awaiting a vaccine shipment from the Eastern Ontario Health Unit to continue our vaccination to community members in, in Akwesasne. We just want everyone to be aware that even after receiving the vaccines, you still need to take all of the safety precautions. It will be a long time before what we have is being referred to as the herded immunity. This happens when the population is immune through immunization or previous infection. It has re been reported that 70 to 90% of the populations need to be vaccinated in order for herded, herded immunity to be effective. I cannot repeat enough that we all must continue to do our part, including wear a mask, maintain two feet, sorry, two meters, six feet distance from others in public and avoid physical, physical social gatherings with anyone outside of our household. This is extremely important. Reen, that is everything that I wanted to update you in the community on this afternoon. I am open to take questions from you in the community. Green, you're, uh, you're muted. There we go. Uh, we're talking with uh, Grand Chief Abram Benedict from the Mohawk Council of Akwazase and uh, joining us today talking about MCA's response to the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, providing information on our current status, our current restrictions, and also uh, the vaccine rollout. Uh, so as we turn to our questions, again, uh, you can call us at 518. 358-3427-613-575-2101. So if you have a question for the Grand Chief, I'll uh, ask that for you and get the information that you're looking for. So I do have a question uh, from uh, some of our elders. So they would like to know uh, if elders will be vaccinated first because the community spread is so great. And even with the strictest measures, they could get it in their homes from their loved ones. So the uh, elders um, uh, in this particular question are asking uh, to be before younger MCA workers uh, who have safety measures in place, such as the mask, the mandates and occupancy levels for spaces. So our elders are often living with multi-generations in a household or are receiving personal care from family. 
So it's a very important question for them and it could be life-saving. So um, uh, we're talking about uh, um, some elders from uh, the northern portion of the territory, especially those that are over the age of 80. So we're looking at the, uh, the top of our uh, population uh, with regards to our elders and their age group. So uh, I know that we just discussed a little bit, uh, you had presented on uh, the different tiers that you have uh, that have been set up by our departments of health. So they would like to know, can they be put above younger MCA workers who have safety measures in place? Mm -hmm. So just a couple things on that, Green. Um, the, uh, the elders are at the top of the priority listing, especially those who are over 80 years old. Uh, with respect to the essential workers, um, the, uh, we have to ensure the vaccinators have been vaccinated. So the essential workers are the, some of the essential workers are the ones who were providing the vaccine, uh, to the elders. Um, the, the decision to get, uh, the vaccine, uh, for the employees also is, um, is optional. So therefore, not every worker will be getting it, um, but can, but those that don't uh, may not be put in situations where they need to be, uh, you know, providing vaccine to the elders so that the risk is lower. We have been, uh, the vaccine conversation in Ontario for, the, uh, sorry, in, in fact, in Canada for the last uh, probably two to three weeks, three weeks has been a hot topic because um, as we had seen, the manufacturer of the vaccine had uh, made some alterations at their at their manufacturing plant in overseas, which had resulted in a delay. Uh, so, which translated into very little number of vaccines getting into the, the community. I have had conversations uh, with uh, the deputy minister in Ontario about about this. Who sits? The minister sits on the allocation committee and have been assured that uh, Ontario First Nations will be receiving a large allocation in the next, uh, likely by the end of this week, if not early next week. And we expect that uh, we will have a good number of vaccines in the community to be able to roll out the uh, frontline and the elders uh, quite quickly. Now, understanding that uh, while we have a large workforce, the essential worker number is, is, is probably, you know, a hundred or so, if, if that. Uh, so if we receive a few hundred vaccines, we will be rolling into the elder uh, tier very quickly. And, you know, there's a lot of factors that come into play about, you know, uh, which the logistics around uh, rolling out the vaccine. So we, we, our health department is working through that now. It's extremely important though, that individuals do call the community health uh, to be signed up. Because one of the things that the governments continue to ask us uh, in the conversations that we're having with them is, is your community uh, going to accept vaccines? And we don't have, we do have a list of people that have called already. Uh, which ask, they ask for your date of birth so that we know what age bracket you're in and then ask a series of questions uh, that are related to the health or uh, the uh, person's ability to accept the vaccine. This is extremely important because we need to be able to uh, ensure that we know how many people want to get vaccinated and are going to accept it, but also because of the limited supply or the high demand across Canada, the, uh, the government is very cautious of sending too many vaccines to one area that aren't going to be used because it can be used somewhere else. So that's why we're asking people to please sign up uh, for the vaccine so that we know how many people we're going to be administering the, vac the vaccine to in the very near future. Now for the elders, absolutely. They will be, I would, I would suspect that in this, if we have received an injection of a few hundred that we will be getting to the elders uh, quite quickly. They are on the top of our priority list. This is something that we have discussed internally with our council as well as with our health, our, our health department. So um, the issue right now is just making sure that we get the vaccines into the community so that we can get our elders, our most vulnerable uh, people uh, vaccinated. So I hopefully that provides some context, but absolutely the, uh, the elderly are on our priority list.
All right, so pre-registration for the COVID-19 uh, vaccine is open. And uh, vaccine supply, of course, as uh, the Grand Chief referenced, is limited. So you can call 613-575-2341, extension 3219, or extension 3247 to do so. So uh, like we said, please get your name on there if you would like to uh, get the uh, vaccine, even if your tier is towards the, uh, uh, the bottom level. Please call now so that they have those numbers so they can show that, yes, we do have individuals uh, that want and need the vaccine in our community. We're talking with uh, Mohawk Council of Aquazaste Grand Chief Abram Benedict. And uh, if you have any questions for the Grand Chief, 518-358-3427, 613-575-2101. So we started the program with his uh, presentation. We're going to continue with uh, questions. So if you have a question, for the Grand Chief, please call it in here to the station. Uh, so a question, uh, some chiefs have been working from home. Are they getting extra money or compensation for their increased internet usage for using programs like Zoom? Uh, there's been no salary increase for chiefs working from home. Um, equipment uh, has been provided to uh, the chiefs and uh, some staff members who are working from home as well to be able to accommodate uh, them uh, working from home. Um, but uh, there's been no uh, salary increase of such. All right. During your last visit, uh, uh, someone asked if they could tap into the, uh, if MCA could tap into the Aquazasti Community Settlement Trust to provide direct relief payments to Aquazaslono living in the northern portion to help with bills and groceries. Not everyone qualifies for things like CERB or EI mm -hmm. and uh, don't want to have to um, repay or go into debt for those benefits provided by the federal government. Yeah, no, absolutely. This question was raised and we did have a uh, regular meeting uh, with the representatives of the Aquazaslono um, Community Settlement Trust. There is a provision in there that has uh, some emergency disaster monies. I believe it's uh, around that name. Unfortunately, it's uh, not been designed for individual um, relief. It would be rather through the MCA um, applying on behalf of the members for programming or additional assistance. Um, but the current pandemic, when we took a look at the policy, it doesn't meet the qualifications uh, for accessing some of that money. As well, um, there has to, the, the trust has to allocate money annually into that fund, and it's not uh, there's a there's some money in there. It's not very much, but uh, there is a program that the uh, Department of Community Social Services has been working on, which you may have seen on some of our social media posts. There is a food uh, pantry that project that has been uh, announced and is underway. Uh, that is a avenue for community members to access to provide some additional assistance there, as well the heating assistance. We have we have done that. Um, depending, you know, there may be additional allocations coming forth in the heating assistance program. Uh, in the coming weeks. That is a consideration that uh, Council uh, may look at as well. So unfortunately, the, the, the community uh, so, uh, excuse me, settlement trust is not an option at this point, um, but we continue to look at different uh, programs that may be available to support the community. And another question with regards uh, to uh, uh, funding during this uh, pandemic. Uh, are there any other uh, 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 amounts of funding that are coming down from the federal government uh, for uh, First Nations communities uh, to deal with this pandemic? Mm -hmm. So I encourage uh, community members um, that have access to the internet. We did um, provide a financial presentation at our last general meeting, which is available on our YouTube page, as well as our Facebook page, that does give a more in-depth breakdown of the monies that have been received and what they are allocated for. Um, we have received uh, various amounts of money in different areas, whether it be through education, health, uh, community support program. Um, you know, there have been various, what they call them line items to help support different areas. Um, we continue to examine, you know, 
what uh, may be other options in there. I do know that a number of programs within the MCA have increased uh, benefits or have expanded uh, to be able to respond to the needs of the community. Um, but, you know, it is difficult uh, to say when the pandemic will come to an end and we, you know, we would expect the federal government to continue to provide additional resources to help combat the COVID-19. Now that is of course, uh, you know, no guarantee. So we have to be very uh, um, considerate in planning going forward as well. Uh, but, you know, as we do receive additional resources, we'll ensure that they are allocated appropriately to support the community in whatever ways are possible, including the workforce as well. Now, what about the overall funding for the Mohawk Council of Akwazaste, the funding that, uh, you know, we get every year, um, pretend we're not in a pandemic. Has any of that funding been um, either brought down by any amount or has it been consistent? Has it changed in any way? The current funding levels have not changed, uh, but sometimes what the challenge is though, is that when we receive money from the government, they want us to deliver a certain service or perform a certain function. And because of the pandemic, there may be things that we are not able to do or we're not able to do, which then, which then could result in having to pay some of that money back. Now, for the most part, all of the services that we generally provide as the Mohawk Council, that's not the case. It's usually kind of pilot projects or one, uh, you know, projects that we're trying or have applied for specific use uh, that we, ever, we end up in those situations. But overall, the uh, financial resources of the MCA or the supports that are provided from the government normally have not changed at this point. Is there any talk that that will? Well, Reen, I mean, it is something of, that we're very conscious of as a community government that unfortunately relies heavily on the federal government because, you know, the Canadian government has invested, you know, literally billions of dollars into the economy, into the, into, uh, you know, the CERB programs, into the provinces uh, to grapple with the, uh, the global pandemic. Now we are 11 months in and there have been massive job losses across the country uh, that have, you know, some economic effect. So at the end of the day, we're conscious that the government continues to spend money that at some point they have to, you know, as they say in, in Canadian, in the Canadian government, pay back the debt or pay down the debt which generally means, you know, that they, they scale back on programming. So, you know, this is, a, this is something that's conscious on our council in my mind going forward that, you know, while we may, you know, while we will get over this uh, business of the pandemic and, and the hump of the pandemic, you know, what will be the long-term economic effects to the organization is something that we have to be conscious of and plan for. It's a real, uh, you know, it's a reality. All right, again, we're talking with Mohawk Council of Akwazasti Grand Chief Abram Benedict and on the program to provide, a, a provide his monthly update. Uh, and again, if you have any questions, you can call the station 518-358-3427-613-575-2101. Now you referenced uh, provisions uh, with regards to the Akwazasti Community Settlement Trust. So there's provisions in there. How do they change the provisions? So the policy that's around the disaster relief or the emergency relief money that's in the um, that's part of the trust that has been established by the trustees, the the revisions or modifications to the policy or qualifications or eligibility would be done by the trustees themselves. So that actually could get changed. Yes, yes, but understanding that the MCA is not a, is not is a receiver of benefits, but we can't change that. The trustees would have to change that. Okay, so if people have follow-ups with that, they can approach the Akwazasti Community Settlement Trust trustees. That's correct, and their information is available on their uh, Facebook page as well. Uh, they may have a website as well. The individual trustees contact information is on there. All right, um, so looking at uh, another question, um, there were some things that were shared on social media with regards to uh, some photos and some information about uh, some of the uh, council chiefs helping out uh, distribution of food and, and warm clothing and blankets and things like that uh, to uh, homeless individuals. Uh, uh, how is that going and what is the extent of um, homelessness as an issue uh, for Aquazasono? 
Yeah, so the homelessness, um, you know, is, uh, is a subject that we have been talking about the last few weeks more so. In fact, well, actually the last few months. As you know, the COVID-19 pandemic has created a lot of challenges in many areas, and that includes those that are, uh, that are homeless or that have, you know, no stable places uh, to, to live. We were reached out by a community organization saying that um, we have been helping members of the Akwesasne community uh, within the city of Cornwall to access, um, you know, housing or find a place for them to uh, to stay temporarily, as well as provide them with some essentials, with some meals, etc. Uh, they said that is there anything that the MCA can do to help us as well. So a, num um, a few members of our council uh, reached out and uh, internally within the organization and said, are there some resources or are there some immediates that we can do to help these individuals? Uh, there was a facilitation that occurred uh, with the community organization. Uh, we provided, we're able to provide some of the individuals with um, packages, uh, book bags with uh, some different resources in it. Uh, various individuals uh, have worked with the community support program to find some temporary uh, lodging within the city of Cornwall. Uh, we did uh, internally within the Mohawk Council host a all uh, staff meeting for those who were interested on the homelessness uh, issue. Now, homelessness is not just, uh, you know, within the city of Cornwall, uh, people that uh, couch surf as well is, uh, you know, is a form of homelessness uh, as well. And that happens within the community. And especially with the COVID-19, when you have somebody who is uh, sleeping on your couch and maybe gone, you know, to different places that you can't control, this is where people are telling them, sorry, you can't stay here anymore because I don't know if you're contacting the, contracting the COVID-19 virus. So it should put a lot more pressure on those folks. So within the uh, Mohawk Council, the Department of uh, Community and Social Services with the assistance of the Akwesasne Family Wellness Program has been putting together uh, quite quickly a, uh, a possible uh, program, pilot project program, whereby we would uh, assist in uh, bringing, uh, providing a center for people uh, who may be homeless or need supports or looking for a hot meal or some uh, essentials for, you know, to be able for them to get by. Uh, this presentation was made to Council on Monday. Uh, we will consider in the very near future approving it as a pilot project, which will then uh, the uh, Akwesasne Family Wellness Program will implement and um, set up some services uh, for those individuals who have been identified as homeless uh, in and around the community. So there has been some uh, quite a bit of workings happening on this. It's a very uh, you know, delicate and unfortunate situation, but the MCA programs have uh, come together and are working quickly as possible to implement a pilot project uh, that will help with those uh, in need. All right, so uh, clarify the earlier question about uh, chiefs working from home uh, was not regarding salary increases, but rather them getting extra money to help them uh, pay their internet bills as a result of increased usage. Okay, Has my, my apologies on that. Uh, just, uh, and then after we, we did cover that question. So the MCA employees are still receiving a 6% um, increase uh, during this time of the pandemic as well. There are some modifications that will like, could be coming uh, to that uh, in the next little while. Uh, but so that I just wanted to make sure that I covered that when I answered that question. Um, so that applies to um, very uh, all across the board, actually, in, in the organization. I do believe that um, there was a stipend provided to the chiefs to be able to uh, ensure that they were able to uh, set up um, set up at their home to set up a home office to be able to uh, work from there. All right, now uh, another question. Do you know what kinds of uh, food is provided in MCA's food pantry? So this caller received the package, was disappointed with the variety. Can there be more potatoes, flour, meat, etc.? So I would say that um, yes, there can be. This, uh, if this is the package that they just received, uh, 
that likely is the first uh, delivery of from that program itself. So we still in kind of the growing phases of this program, the food pantry program. You may recall that during in the first uh, couple months of the pandemic, we had done a food distribution. So that is not the same. We have now instituted a food pantry program. But yes, they will be looking for feedback and in ensuring that uh, what they are providing, what and when and how much uh, is adequate to meet the community members needs. So I appreciate that if that's from the food pantry, uh, we will pass that along to the organizers and uh, you know they will hopefully um, hear a bit more feedback from other members and make those adjustments. How are we doing with our MCA um, um, supported uh customs uh, lane the domestic uh lane for the cbsa going into the city of cornwall uh how are we doing with that pilot project and how much longer is the pilot uh lasting yeah so from the initial feedback or the feedback that we've been getting overall it's been positive uh that community members are um you know appreciative that the uh, domestic lane is there. It was initially instituted as a six month pilot project that will be extended uh, because as you know, the border uh, is cross is closed to just most people except for essential uh, people, um, which then kind of, I would say, skews the results a bit of that domestic lane. Because in, if we were not in a pandemic, we would have normal traffic crossing, crossing there as well. And we could really measure if that lane is being super effective. But right now, you know, it is all, you know, 90 per, probably 90% of the people crossing through there now are our own people. So they're not uh, and you know, so it does have, uh, it is working very well. Um, but I hopefully, you know, we can it'll continue to be extended past the pandemic so that we can see whether or not it's a real benefit. But the but so far the, uh, the, the feedback has been very positive. Now, did you reference um, the Aquasasta Mohawk Board of Education, like the district schools, are they still not in-person learning? Yeah, so right now the, the children are not in-person learning. They are all online. And prior to being online, which was in, from September going forward, uh, they had either the, ch the families or the children uh, had the option of being all online, meaning that they were doing it remotely from home, or what the Board of Education has called the hybrid model. And the hybrid was that they were two days in the, in the actual class and then two days uh, remotely. So currently right now, since the numbers in the pandemic, uh, or sorry, the number, the number of cases in the community went higher, we went 100% uh, remote in March, or sorry, in April uh, 19th, they will be going back to uh, the in-class and online. But our high school students are going to school, right, in person? Yes, so because the high school students uh, go to the city of Cornwall for high school, uh, they are they are um, in, in class all the time. All right, uh, again, we're talking with Mohawk Council of Aquazaste, Grand Chief Abram Benedict, and uh, open to questions right now. Um, we will wrap up at 1.15 at the latest, okay? okay. So... We'll put uh, a time on that. So if you have any questions, get them in now. Uh, a listener would like to know, why is the environment department having been brought down from a department to a service provider? Is there anything that can be done to put priority on the environment? Mm -hmm. Well, I can assure you that the, pro the environment is still extremely important to us. Um, the, the, it has not been a department probably for... 10 years now. It's been a program uh, under uh, Dejo de Nahuago, and now it's under the Department of Infrastructure and Housing. Um, I think that, you know, the mandate and the services provided by the Environment Department have not changed. Uh, whether or not it's a program or department uh, has changed, but the services being provided still continue to be the same. Does it affect people's salaries if it's not a um, program or a department? Well, previously when it was a, when it was a department, it was headed likely, or at that time, yes, it was headed by a director. Uh, now it would be headed by a program manager, but the director, um, so director and program manager positions would have changed. Okay. Um, so uh, looking at uh, 
questions that anyone has for the Grand Chief at 518-358-3427-613-575-2101. And uh, looking at the mobile testing unit, is that something that will be restarted uh, for the Mohawk Council or do we need uh, better weather for that? Are there any plans for the mobile testing unit? Right now, there is not. I mean, the reason why it's not a mobile testing center right now or it's not being mobilized is because of the weather. Uh, when it started getting cold, uh, you know, I mean, it's a camper trailer, so it's not, uh, you know, you generally use them in the winter, especially around Upper Sussna, it's so cold. Uh, so we've went to the G the former GNL uh, site uh, here in Ganadigal, uh, is now the testing center. They also will administer tests on Cornwall Island uh, as well. There is some consideration uh, for the vaccine rollout, whether or not the trailer, uh, the mobile unit will be used. But again, it comes back to the heating. Uh, but as we talked about earlier, for some of the elderly, you know, coming out of their homes is not an option. So we'll be sending people in uh, into their homes. So as of right now, you know, the unit uh, will be parked and at least until the spring. And hopefully we're past testing at, in the spring and, uh, you know, well on our way for, to being a herded immunity. All right, so uh, Grand Chief Abram Benedict from the Mohawk Council of Aquazaste. Uh, we will be wrapping up the program at 1.15, as we mentioned. Um, so if you do have any questions, uh, get them into us. If we do not end up getting to them, I will make sure that the Grand Chief uh, and uh, everyone that works with him gets those questions so that they know uh, that the community is uh, asking about things. Um, now, looking at uh, the um, wakes and funerals, uh, under the jurisdiction of MCA. How has that uh, been going? And are there any um, continuing restrictions or anything like that? Yeah, so <clears throat> because the uh, funeral homes are regulated by the state and the province, we don't have a funeral home in the community. Uh, they still have to follow their current directives where they may be. Uh, we do know that Donaldson's Funeral Home does provide, uh, you know, visitation services under controlled uh, environment, meaning that uh, only so many people can be in. Uh, Cornwall, because they are now back in the um, back in the orange and it's not under lockdown, does uh, is allowing for in person uh, under you know controlled uh, number situations in the community currently right now. Unfortunately, uh, we we are not allowing any at home at home wakes ex exactly because you know the numbers can't be controlled. Um, so unfortunately, for the time period, uh, there will not be any uh, in-home wakes. And just to read on that, and you know, it's been extremely difficult for everybody with the under the pandemic situation, and, and especially during, you know, losing a loved one. And you know, hopefully, uh, when we're past all of this, uh, that we can come together as a community and properly grieve uh, together. Uh, but you know, on the on the uh, item of gatherings. The last week we have, well, the last two weeks, we have seen a significant increase in numbers. I mean, the tribe is reporting upwards of 40. We're at, you know, mid 20s. You know, I think on your radio report on Monday, you highlighted that there's 70 something amongst the entire community, which is quite large for considering the size of our community. We are a large community. Um, but we do know that a lot of those have been attributed to family gatherings. You know, there are people that are coming together on Saturday and Sunday at their mom's place, you know. And when we talk about social bubbles, um, you know, bringing bubbles together and then going back to them, that's not the social bubble. And it's, uh, I know that, you know, in the last day or so, we've had a, a, another increase of uh, people going into isolation for exposure. And, you know, it's those situations. And we really need to be, I can't, I can't express enough how we need to be not gathering, whether even, in, you know, we, while Ontario is saying 10 at indoor gathering, we're really pressing hard and say, you know, within your home bubble for now until we can, just a couple more weeks until we can get these vaccines rolled out more quickly and that more people are, are immunized um, and that, you know, we'll hopefully see some better weather as well. I know we're all tired because we just wanna do more than uh, be at home and be at work. All right, now with regards to the vaccine rollout, uh, as a follow-up question, we talked about the importance of elders uh, being a top priority and it might have been miscommunicated that um, they should be ahead of, for example, frontline office workers for the Mohawk Council of Aquazastan. 
Yeah, so the office workers will be um, will be included in just the general rollout. Now, there's the essentials are the, the healthcare workers, the ambulance workers, the police um, are the essentials. Anybody that supports the administration are going to be just in the same tier system. If we have an 80 year old working for us, which I don't think we do, but they would be on in that level and they would go down from that point. Okay. All right. Um, just following up. Uh, I, mean, I just want to. I just want to highlight too, though, that on the uh, the it's important that people call ahead and please register because, again, as I mentioned in my presentation, um, the governments are ask are asking how many people are going to get the vaccine. Well, we have about eighty five hundred people in our community that are over the age of eighteen. Uh, the numbers we provided earlier this week based on the Indian registry was about 20, it's around 3,000 people, 55 and over, you know, so they have access to that, those numbers as well, but they're saying, well, how many people want the vaccine, right? And so we need to get a, a better um, number on how many people want it. And I, I ask that if you are prepared to get it, please call the community health program pre-register. If you have questions on the effectiveness or, you know, the, uh, about the vaccine, please give the community health nurses a call as well, or talk with your health uh, professional um, about the vaccine. How are we doing employment-wise for the Mohawk Council of Akwazasa? I know at the uh, start of the pandemic, uh, there were no layoffs. Is that still the case? For generally, yes, that still continues to be the, the case. There have not been any, uh, you know, programs that have been, uh, where people have been laid off. There may have been a small number but nothing in mass that we have seen in other places all right so uh, when is your mca general meeting good question so the general meeting is uh, this thursday which we've been hosting on the zoom platform uh, we ask that individuals either call our office and ask uh, to be sent the information or send an email to meetings at aquasasne.ca uh, and they will send you uh, the meeting information on Thursday morning. So the general meeting will be this Thursday, 6 p.m. Uh, on, on Zoom. Okay. Is this an election year? Yes, it is. Is, is the pandemic going to affect our election date? Have we looked ahead to that? How is that uh, working? Yeah, I, I don't know all the particulars on that, but the uh, the date of the election is prescribed in the Akwesasne election law, so the date cannot be changed. But the, uh, you know, the physicalness of the vote uh, will be different. So people will have, if there are lineups, you know, people have to be social distance from six feet apart, but there still will continue to be uh, in-person voting. Uh, there's no provisions under the law to do anything other than uh, in-person voting. So no online voting for this? No, the law doesn't provide for online voting. I wish it did. We have tried to revise the law a couple of times, but it, was, uh, it wasn't it was approved. So it will be in person. I expect that the the electoral officer will take in the, in the deputy referendum off, or sorry, de deputy electoral officers will take, uh, will ensure that all of the COVID-19 uh, precautionary steps are taken during the process. How are we doing with our dispensaries? Uh, so the, uh, the, the Mock Council has approved, uh, uh, I think maybe five or six uh, licenses in the community, maybe five, I don't know offhand, uh, dispensary licenses. A few cultivation licenses have been, um, have been approved as well. Uh, so every licensee, regardless of being uh, retail or cultivation, meaning they sell or grow, uh, has to sign an agreement with the Mohawk Council that uh, stipulates the terms of the license, meaning that uh, they have to provide inspection to be able to be inspected. They have to provide a monthly, or sorry, not a monthly, a, um, a community contribution fee as well. Um, so those uh, seem to be going relatively well uh, thus far. All right, so again, we want to give that phone number. Uh, someone missed the phone number to pre-register for the vaccine. So if you would like to pre-register for the COVID-19 vaccine under the Mohawk Council of Akwazasne, they ask if you're interested at all to please call them. You can call 613-575-2341. And again, that's 613-575-2341, extension 3219 or 3247. Uh, so uh, vaccine for someone that's just tuning in uh, has uh, the staff and the residents of both of our facilities 
been given both doses of the vaccine? For the most part, yes, they have. Some uh, may not have been uh, because uh, they can't, uh, members, sorry, residents who are positive cannot receive uh, the vaccine. So when they gave out the first set of uh, vaccines, those who are positive would not have received it during the second, the, the, um, the ones that didn't get the first shot would have got it at that time. So for the most part, yes, the staff and the residents have been vaccinated. All right, so we're going to close the phone lines now. Uh, we've got about six or seven minutes, and I do have my last set of questions here. A uh, community member is having issues with their internet service provider and is having issues with Quebec postal codes. Is there anything council can do to help them with that? Yeah, I would say that uh, give your district chief or my office a call, uh, provide us with a bit more information on the uh, postal code issue. The uh, internet is, uh, is a continuous uh, challenge that we face in all parts of the community. As we announced, uh, you know, we are proceeding um, with the fiber to the home project, which, you know, will hopefully at some point provide some alleviation to those issues. Um, but as far as, uh, you know, individual services, it's, it's a tough, it's tough because, uh, you know, those are with likely with Bell Canada. Uh, we can see if there's any way that we can assist with them, but if it's connectivity slow, uh, those are those are more physical technical issues that are, are are not easily fixed. But we'd be open to having a conversation with them to see how we could help. Why is MCA not paying employees who are in isolation or quarantine when they put their health and family's health at risk for MCA? Mm. I don't know the uh, particulars around that. That's uh, the administration uh, of the MCA has made that determination. But I do know that, uh, you know, in certain situations where individuals may have been uh, exposed or uh, contracted the virus during work situations, there are considerations for that. But then if there are situations where individuals, uh, you know, have contracted or been exposed outside of the work situation, you know, there are different sets of, um, different sets of situation or different sets of uh, outcomes for those situations. I, I don't have the answer for that, but they should speak to their manager about uh, the situation because everyone is different if it's workplace or home. Uh, home is a little bit different because, uh, you know, we, we want people to continue to be safe in the workplace, which we can control a lot of those, those scenarios or uh, factors in outside of the home we can't. Can we make sure there's at least one patrol car in each of the districts at all times? I can relay that information to the police services um, and uh, find let them know that uh, this inquiry has come forward. I don't know how uh, vehicles are placed to the community, but we can relay that information to the chief of police. Uh, anything you could do to prevent people from going on the ice and putting our firemen and firewomen at risk? Yeah, that's, uh, I think that's a, a, a annual problem, unfortunately, that we have here. I do want to commend all of the uh, first responders who do uh, respond, but also acknowledge that sometimes people's behavior put those uh, individuals at risk, which is not good. Uh, well, I can talk internally to see, you know, what may be some options as far as physical options to prohibit or slow down or stop people from, from doing that. But you know, I mean, these uh, these actions are every individual person's action. So they need to be conscious that while well, maybe they, whatever they're doing, uh, maybe uh, for recreational or leisure or time saving, um, what have you. But uh, you know, those others that have to come in and assist uh, are putting themselves at risk. So. I'll uh, have a conversation internally to see what may be available uh, that we can assist with that. But we just need people to think twice too. What plans do the directors have for employees who haven't had time off in months? Well, I would say that, you know, a lot of those situations that you've just described are likely in the healthcare field uh, where people are not, have not been able to. Um, with respect to Junkanusade, we have uh, contracted uh, with an external agency to bring in additional employees to help with 
uh, ensuring that, you know, the, the elders there are taking care of, the residents are taken care of. So we will continue to do that, which will also give, uh, you know, our, our regular employees a bit of a reprieve. But hopefully when uh, things start to slow down, uh, you know, the employees will have, be able to have more time off. Um, but, you know, I think that uh, we can have a conversation with the administration to see. I would encourage employees to talk with their, uh, their individual program managers and directors as well and say, look, either can I have some time off or, you know, what, what can be done. But that's, in a, you know, the administration, um, I can forward that on to them to see. But we do want to thank them as well for being there uh, during this time of need. So those people that unfortunately had to forego their, their annual vacations or what have you, or just even being at home because we're not able to travel, thank you for that. And what are the plans for the Portlands? Yeah, so the uh, Portlands, um, we, are, we have hired a, uh, a uh, manager to help us move the consultation process forward. So uh, when we uh, signed uh, the transfer or divestiture agreement with the city of Cornwall and the federal government, we always told the community that we would engage with them on what the next uh, steps will be. Uh, unfortunately, uh, for a few reasons that was delayed and now then the pandemic comes about, but we have uh, rehired a manager to help with the uh, with move the project forward. So in the next couple months, we will, uh, you'll hear more information about engagement sessions with the community uh, on the specific, uh, I, well, on the Portlands itself and to hear community's ideas uh, for that uh, use of that land. All right. So that's all that I have in front of me. Like I said, if they've taken some calls uh, downstairs and I don't have those, I will pass those along to you uh, and your executive assistant as well, Grand Chief. So what we'd like to do right now is turn the table back to you uh, to wrap up today's program. Absolutely. Well, as always, Reen, thank you very much for uh, spending some time with me this afternoon, giving me the opportunity to update you and the community and as well take some questions from the community. I appreciate all of the questions that uh, people have put forward uh, to myself and, uh, you know, in the administration of the MCA. Uh, the last 11 months, you know, have been extremely uh, challenging for all of us. We never thought that we would say, be saying 11 months uh, since this pandemic started or since an emergency was declared in our community. Uh, we will be creeping upon 12 months uh, very shortly. And this has not, regardless uh, from day one, has not been easy uh, for anyone. And we ask that everyone continue to support each other, to exercise uh, patience uh, as we continue to move through this. I know that the weather is, uh, is difficult. Uh, we don't want to be all cooped up in home, at home uh, and or at work if you're, at, if you're working. But we just need to continue to take this uh, one day at a time and support each other along the way. So again, uh, thank you, Reen, and the CKON staff for, uh, for this afternoon, and Yamagoa to all of our employees, as always, who are working very hard to keep us safe, the essential workers, uh, and to you, our listeners in our community, for continuing to do uh, your part to keep yourself, our families, and ultimately our communities safe. So Yamagoa, and uh, we will get through this.